um, on our little trip. Uh, we're going to sing this morning. Come on and praise the Lord. <laughs>
Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Do you feel his presence? Several years ago, when we were in Port here in Michigan, there was a little lady in our church, very talented. She was a business person, but probably one of the quietest women I have ever met. And she came to me one day, and she said, Sister Scott, would you pray about something? She said, would you think about having a ladies' retreat? And I said, well, yes, I'll pray about it. And I started to pray about it. And God began to move. And our first retreat we had, I think we had about less than 100. But the next year we had more and the next year. And we finally got so big that we had to make a decision whether we were going to stay at our church or we were going to go into an auditorium. But I joined with the Assembly of God. I don't even remember her name now, but she was a very talented musician and she was in charge of the music and we got several churches together working in this retreat and she taught me something about singing that I've never forgotten as we were singing that song you were singing he is so precious but I closed my eyes and I said Jesus you're precious you are so precious she said, Donna, it's so important that you sing, you sing to him. Not to each other, but to him. And I try to take every song that we sing, every song that I hear, and I make it personal to him. And I said, Jesus, oh, you're precious. You're so precious. Down through these years that I've walked with you since I was in high school, you have become more precious to me. And I appreciate you. And I'm sorry for all those times when I've not been aware of you like I should. You're my miracle worker. You're my savior. You're my God. You're my friend. He's my trusted friend. Does, do you trust him? Trust him with everything in your life? You're so precious. You're so precious to me. Hallelujah. Would you just praise him right now in your own way? Would you just thank him for being the Savior that he is? Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, I say your name. I say your name with all the tenderness and the love that I possibly can say it. Jesus. 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 Jesus, that name that is above all names, that name that is above everything on the earth and in the heaven, Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, 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 oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, sweet holy Jesus, sweet loving Christ, beautiful Savior, King of all kings, Lord of all lords, Jesus, 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 holy, 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 holy be the name of Jesus high and lifted up and glorified be your holy name jesus jesus oh jesus oh jesus 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 sweet sweet jesus loving kind savior oh lily of the valley bright and morning star my friend oh hallelujah be your name jesus Jesus, Jesus, how sweet the name Jesus, how glorious the name Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, we're your followers. We bear your name. We bear your name proudly. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus, sweet holy Jesus. Oh, you're so kind. You're here this morning. I feel your presence. You've entered into this building. You're here. You're overseeing. 
You see each of us. You know each of us. You know our beginning. You know our end. You know where we've come from and you know where we're going because you're Jesus. You're Jesus the Savior. You're Jesus the Lord. You're Jesus the marvelous one. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We are your people. We've gathered here to magnify you, to glorify you, to lift up your name. Oh, to lift up your name among the peoples. Oh, we're here, Jesus, because we love you. In our own unfailing way, we love you. We love you, Jesus. 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 Oh, we love you. You're here. And we honor you. We honor you this morning. We honor you, the King of all kings. There is none above you. There will never be any above you. You are the one and only. You're Jesus. You're Jesus. Hallelujah. The, you're the Messiah. Oh, you're the great one. Jesus. 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 The Prince of Peace. Jesus, the Lord of all lords. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, 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 oh, we love that name, we love that name, Jesus, 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 oh, Jesus, you hear us when we pray. You touch our lives in so many ways. You're always there. You're always there, Jesus. You never leave us alone. We're always protected in your arms of love. Oh, you are love personified. You are love personified. You are Jesus. You are Jesus at the cross. <laughs> You are Jesus at the grave, and you're the returning Jesus on the throne. You are Jesus, and you're my Lord. You're my Lord, and I worship you this morning. I worship you this morning among these people that know your name and honor your name, Jesus. Oh, how deserving you are. How deserving you are of our worship. How deserving you are of our worship. Oh, you're Jesus. You're Jesus. You're Jesus. Oh, one day soon we'll be in your presence. One day soon we'll see you face to face. One day soon we'll not worship you in spirit and in truth, but we'll see you face to face. And we'll know the Lord and Savior Jesus. Oh, the great Messiah, the great teacher. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I say your name with love. It rolls from my lips. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 take your authority, take your authority on this earth, Jesus, take your authority in the, your holy name, Jesus. Oh, Father, thank you for your son, thank you for your son, thank you for your gift, thank you for your gift. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We feel your presence in such a wonderful way this morning. Oh, it's so hard to leave you. It's so hard to leave your presence. We feel you here. We feel you here in a magnificent way. We feel you here in a magnificent way. Oh, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, you're my all in all. You're my strength. You're my victory. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Be real in every heart. Reach down your precious hand, that crucified hand, that hand of love, and save our children this morning and our loved ones. Let them know and experience what we're feeling this morning. Let them know the reality of Jesus. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, Jesus, your will be done on this earth. 
You see the trials and the heartaches. You see the tears. You see the fears. Oh, your heart breaks over and over and over with what you see. But have mercy this morning, Jesus. Have mercy this morning, Jesus. Have mercy and hear us. Hear us. Hear us as we pray, as we call upon your name, and as we honor you and we glorify you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, how awesome it is to be in your presence. How awesome to feel you, to know that you're here, to know that you're here, to know that you're here. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I don't know about you, but when I feel his presence like this, Betty, it's just hard to come back. It's, do you feel him? Do you feel his presence like I do? Choir, do you know that he's here? He's here, Teresa. He's here. The King of all kings and the Lord of all lords has visited us in this little church this morning. He's here. And I praise Him for it. 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 He knows your need. He knows every pain. He knows every tear. He knows everything going on in your life. He knows and He understands and He cares. And he cares. And he just wants you to take the message of love. He just wants us to let our neighbor know that Jesus is love. I don't know about some of you, but I get so dismayed. I, I hardly ever listen to the news anymore. If I seem ignorant to you on something that's going on, it's because I can't listen. Because my heart is breaking. I've always been a red, white, and blue girl. When I was just a little girl, I loved that flag. I loved living under that flag. I didn't know what it was like I was in a little old town. Honey, you picked me up in a, on a dirt road, didn't you? I was just, that's where I lived. In that little community I lived, we didn't know what streets were. You've brought me a long way. <laughs> uh, if I'm around some more dirt roads, you've brought me a long way. <laughs> But you know what? It's Jesus. And all he wants us to do, Brother Wesley, is just serve him and let his love shine out. And I believe when we do that, when we want to do that, we'll see something happen. Are you really happy now to be in the house of the Lord? Are you really happy? We want to thank the Lord for Richard Ballette. He was able to come home. I he and Carmelita are my two astonishments in my life lately. Every time Carmelita enters this church and I look at her face, I remember the night that I slipped into the hospital and her body was in shock. Carmelita, your whole, you were jerking the whole bed. And I knew enough to know that you were in shock. And I see what a miracle how God has brought her. Never will, I'll never get that vision of her in that nursing home when I saw her on, on a little bicycle. And I thought, oh my, this should be a dead woman. <laughs> but you have been good, Lord. And Richard come home from the hospital, and I know he had two surgeons in that operating room, but he had that third one. How many of you have seen that picture down at the Florida hospital? Jesus standing there, and he's got his hand on the surgeon's hand. I showed that to Millie and to to Jeff. I said, Jeff, look at that. I said, that's what's going on right now in that, in that um, uh, operating room. We can't be there, but I said, he's there. He's there. And I praise God that he is home and recuperating. He's just such a wonderful miracle. Doesn't it thrill you when you see a miracle happen? You say, oh, yeah, still working. Nice to have Dorothy back today. Dorothy has been out this, boy, she did so well on her first surgery that I just expected her to be back in a couple, three weeks. But I, this one was a little tougher, wasn't it, Dorothy? But we won't talk about the fact that we're getting a little older every day either. 
these bodies, you know, they were out. So it's nice to have Dorothy back. Melanie, it's so glad to have you two back here today. It's to worship with us. We want to receive our offering. So if our ushers will come. Hi, Sissy, I love you. Father, it's in your son Jesus' name that we receive this offering this morning, thanking you and praising you for the way that you have blessed this little church, the way you have blessed our lives and blessed us together as a body of believers. Thank you because I'm a part of this church and I'm a part of this family and that I can feel their love and know that I'm not alone, but that I stand with people that love you. Bless this offering now, Father. Take it. May it be used for your glory and your glory alone. Bless those that give. Bless those that don't have. And we believe, Father, that you're going to meet every need. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I think. Praise team, sing. Praise team. Thank you for the extra help this morning. I really appreciate it. I'm in this church. I don't know about you, but I'm proud to be in this church. If you'll stand with us this morning, I'm in this church. <laughs> Let's 
God is absolutely, independently, unchangeably good. Have you told him lately how good he is? Wow. This past week, he has blessed all of us immensely, hasn't he? We've had sleep at night. We had food in the daytime. We've had, we, we've just had him blessing us, and I can't thank him enough. Wow, it's good to see all of you here today. I've just been worshiping God through this whole service, Jonathan. I know you feel him here, don't you? Good to see he and his sweet wife Melody here today. And boy, Dorothy, it's good to see you up and kicking again. I guess that's good terminology, isn't it? <laughs> wow, and she's surrounded by family back there. Isn't that wonderful? Hey, tonight is a gospel sing. You don't want to miss this. I don't know who Frank's flying in tonight. He may have just flew in himself, I don't know. <laughs> but Frank, he usually fly somebody in, but be here for singing tonight. Now, we're going to come and we're going to sing. I want to sing like we did this morning to Jesus. That's how we need to do it, Hazel. We sing to him, don't we? Have to, because he's the one that's worthy of all of our praise and all of, all of the glory. Well, I have a sermon this morning that I want to share with you. It's from over in First Thessalonians. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. If you didn't bring them, we have the scripture on the screen for you. So you're right up front. Amen. It's good to have the Fussels and the Frisbees and all these. This family that was gone last week, they had a great time up there. And uh, I, I, I want you to know, uh, they come back just elated at what a good time they had up in Georgia. Now, I don't know what it is about Georgia that rubs off on you. Uh, but there's something good up there because they got another good thing going on next month up in Georgia, and it's called a prayer conference. And our churches of God are coming in from all over. It's in Cartersville, Georgia. It's for two solid days. And it's all about prayer. It's about reading the Word of God. And we've come up to the generation, I believe, that's going to be raptured. Are you happy to be in the generation that's going to go up to see Jesus? I believe we're in that generation. The Bible pinpointed it for us. It said that that period of the church... Philadelphia, Laodicea, that, that period of the church, he said that I'm coming to receive you. So all I can say is fasten your seat belts. We're going to leave here real fast in a twinkling of an eye. Have you ever thought about how fast that is? Twinkling of an eye. Fast as you can bat an eye, you're gone. Well, read with me chapter 5, verses uh, actually 5, 6, and 7. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Five and six. I was looking at the wrong thing. Okay. Pardon? Six and seven. I've got several done here. 
I might get to preach on all of them. <laughs> Therefore, let us not sleep as others do. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Now, this says a whole lot, doesn't it? This says so very much, and I think that is a message for our time. Paul said, for those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. Six and seven. Well, thank God for verse five when he said, therefore, let us not sleep. I'm using for a subject this morning an arousing of Christians. I believe in the day and the time in which we live. And I listen to the news. I read the newspapers. I go to the marketplace. I travel here and there. And I see that people are far, far away from God. And if we have ever sought the face of God, we need to do it now. There needs to be an arousing of Christianity. Christians, we need to be on fire. Like the early Christians. Wow, in their day they turned the known world upside down. I would like for that to happen to our known world, wouldn't you? I'd like to see this place turned upside down. There is too much of settling down in religion. Too much settling down. God help us to never just want to settle down, but help us to be about the Father's business. That's what, that's what we really need this day and this time. God help us, we pray. We need to be excited about Jesus. We need to be so excited about Jesus, we tell everybody we know about Him. We need to talk about His banner of victory waving over us. We need to tell them about that banner of peace that is waving over us. Us, you 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 see, uh, we we need to be more excited about Jesus than we do other things. You know, it's easy to get excited about things, isn't it? Oh, I like things. There's a lot of play toys that 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 even adults have and and, and seniors uh, have when they get up to be even in that particular age bracket. But from children on up, there's all kinds of things. Oh, but I want to get excited about Jesus more than things. Things because in Him we have life and in Him we have it more abundantly. You see, there's no, no, no excited or no zeal like we had when we first found Jesus Christ. Remember the zeal that you had when Jesus came into your life. 
When, when you was introduced to Him and, and you were saved by the power of God and His grace was sufficient for you, His mercy was extended to you, wow, you had zeal. I remember when I got saved, I wanted to tell other people about what happened to me. I want to be as excited today as I was back then, don't you? But you see, somehow there is a settling down. We, we, we again have gone through a cycle, and if we're not careful, we'll get more excited again about things that take up of our all of our time or most of our time. You see, we've reached a place where I have told you before and I'll tell you again and I'll keep expounding it that we are at ease in the living room where we live with a don't disturb sign on the door. That's where we have a arrived to in Christendom. Now, if you're not there, thank God for that. Oh, but out in Christendom, I want you to know that of the earth's population, they are saying that only 2% are Christians. Can you think of that? That's not a big percentage at all. I was astounded when I had read that. But I want you to know I don't want to get called up in the events of this world more than called up in Jesus. There's a lot going on. Every day you pick up the new paper, something more is going on. Every time you turn on the television, something else has happened. Oh, there's a lot going on. But I want it to be going on in the Christian community. I want us to be a about the Father's business. That's what Jesus said. He said, I must be about my Father's business. If it was necessary for Jesus to be about the Father's business in His day, I believe it's important that you and I be about the Father's business in the day and time in which we live. What do you think? I think that it is important that we do so. You see, I was just sort of doing a little figuring this week. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I, 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 I got some statistics that said the average church person, the average Christian, prays three minutes a day. I, I want that just to soak in a little bit. Average. Thank God for people above average in Selwood. But in Christendom, average Christian prays three minutes a day. You see, there's 24 hours in a day. And to just pray three minutes doesn't sound very much like very much, does it? But I, I looked at it in a week. And there's 24 hours in a day. And multiply that by seven. And you get 168 hours in a week. And stop and think about how much you would pray in a week. 168 hours, and you give the Lord somewhere about an hour and a half in 168 hours. Well, why am I slowing down? Because I feel like that 
we have settled down with a don't disturb sign. I, I don't want to be disturbed is the cry that's going out. But if we have ever prayed before, I think we need some intercessor, intercessors. I think we need to bombard heaven in this day and time in which we live. Things are waxing worse and worse. The Bible said that in the latter days, things would get worse and worse. It's not going to get better, folk. It's going to get worse. But as for me and my house, we are going to stand up for God. We're going to make a stand for Jehovah. And we're going to proclaim that there is none of but God and we must serve Him if we're going to dwell with Him in eternity. When Jesus returns, will He find us sleeping? Well, Paul seeks to stir up the Thessalonican church, the Thessalonians. That was his endeavor. He wanted to stir up this church. So since I'm using the word arouse, we need the arousing of Christians, that then I would like to see what this word means. Would you look at this word for just a little with me? It means to awake from sleep. Awake from sleep or any, any state resembling sleep. That's what it means. It really means to awaken. Wouldn't you like to see Christians awake for God? Oh, I would like to see them as they were in the New Testament times, in the Ephesus church era. That's how I would like to see Christians. Now, in the beginning of that era, they were on fire. Now, they settled down in the latter part of that Ephesus era. And Jesus said to them, I have somewhat against you. You've lost your first love. Now, when you start losing your first love, then you start settling down. Oh God, we don't want to settle down. We want to be an army on the march with every face toward the enemy. We want to be soldiers of Christ with the gospel weapon in our hand and we will go in the name of Jesus casting out devils praying for the sick, winning the lost to Jesus Christ. That is what Jesus came to do. And that's what He called you and I to do. Not to settle down, but to be about the Father's business. And I'm calling you to arousement this morning. Awaken. Awaken means a revival. Oh, we need to be awakened to revival. Awaken to revival. A revival of religion, a revival of Christians. The Thessalonians might have not been asleep, but Paul wanted to make sure that he kept them awake.
And what I want to do is to keep us all awake. I don't want to go to sleep on my watch that God has placed me. I don't think you want to go to sleep on your watch because this is serious business. God saved us not to just sit down and just easily, easily enjoy living. Oh yes, He wants us to be happy, but He saved us so that we can by all means save some. That's what this life is all about, that we could prepare to live with God forever. You see, this life isn't very long. I think the appointed time for man here is 70 years. The Bible said three score and ten and a score. Uh, three score and ten, a score is 20. So you have three twenties is 60 and ten is 70 years of age. We have some folk here uh, who, who just gone past that just a tad, you know, just a barely a little bit. But let me tell you something. Uh, uh, God's really good to us, isn't He? We're still going. Some just now has arrived to the age of 70. We get really excited. Boy, I reached a plateau. I'm 70. But Jesus said that's when we'll probably die. <laughs> Well, 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 not always. We, uh, you know, now they live to be on in their 80s. And they're talking about Brother Richard this morning going through this surgery and, 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 and doing well. This guy's in his 80s. You, did you know? He doesn't look it, but I'm wanting you to know God was really blessing him. And, and the Bible said, by strength through strength that God gives to us, we can go beyond that 70 years. I thank God that I'm still up before you this morning. I could be in glory. Most of us here this morning could be in glory, and we're getting ready. Amen. This is God's waiting room. We're getting ready. We're just waiting for Jesus to come after His own. But by all means, He said, Paul said, I want to keep that Thessalonian church awake. I want to be awake for God. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, even in my in my later years, I want to be awake. It's no time for me to sit down and go to sleep. I can't afford to go to sleep. Well, let me hurry and reach a couple of more points right here. I want to talk about the necessity that there, there it's necessary to stay awake. The, ne the, the necessity, the necessity can be found in in Ephesians, if you if you want to turn over to the book of Ephesians, look at look at uh, Ephesians chapter five verses fourteen and fifteen. Therefore he says, "Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light." See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. This is necessary for you and I to stay awake, know what's going on. Never know that the devil is as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Did you know, first of all, the devil is out after you? each of you, and he's trying to devour you. The devil is after your children, he's trying to devour them. The devil is after your family, he's trying to devour them. I want you to know the devil is a sly old fox, <coughs> and he is after everyone that he possibly can get a hold of. <coughs> you see, the necessity is we don't want the Lord to catch us asleep. We can't afford that the Lord would catch us asleep. Mark chapter 13. I think we got uh, a passage of Scripture here. Mark chapter... Uh, Mark 
Luke chapter 13, 35 and 36. Listen to what it said. 35 and 36. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour the master of the house is coming. In the evening? At midnight? At the crowing of the rooster? Or in the morning? You don't know what watch. The master is coming that he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to all. Now this is a message to us, red leather edition from Mark's writing, and you can find it in the other Gospels. He said, what I have to say to you, I say to all, and we're in the all. Watch. Watch. God is telling us this morning, we need to be watching. Watch and pray. Some of the time, we ought to, when we pray, we should just keep our eyes open. You ever pray with your eyes open? I know a lot of times, I, I guess I used to think you ought to close your eyes and close out everything, you know, when you pray. And that's good. But Jesus said, watch and pray. Sometimes you need to look around. Watch and pray. Be about the Father's business. You see, the Lord, he, we don't want Him to catch us asleep, do we? He give us also uh, 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 something to look at when He said there are ten virgins and, and they were all sleeping and they were slumbering. You remember what Jesus said? And what happened next? The Bible said, while they were sleeping, while they were slumbering, while they were rubbing their eyes, behold, the bridegroom came. There's going to be some people sleeping. There's going to be some people who are just, uh, just, just, just have settled down. They are just, just settled out. But Jesus said those that had oil in their vessels, they went to be with the Lord. And the five foolish, those who were sleeping and foolish and didn't have any oil, it's all right to sleep, but you got to have some oil in your vessel. And the oil is uh, it, 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 it's a symbol or an emblem of the Holy Spirit. Oh, we need the Holy Spirit in our heart and in our life. I love when I enter into the chief secret chambers of prayer, having the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit there. Donna talking about getting into the presence and not wanting to come back. I want you to know when you get in that place, you want to stay there. We need to have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Stir up the gift is what he encouraged. Stir up the gift that is in you. You see, a sleeping man is unconscious and very easily captured. So if you, you, you have to be alert because the devil walking about seeking whom he may devour. If you have fallen asleep, then you're unconscious spiritually and easily to be captured. You see where I'm coming from? We cannot afford to give up, not even for one minute. Oh, I, th I count it a joy to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Sleeping Christians are of no value to God. People who've gone to sleep on God, they're no value to Him because they're in an unconscious state. Oh, but those who are awake in the Lord. I'm not talking about just going to sleep at night now. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in our experience with God. Oh, 
let me say, Christians, God's been dealing with me on this for a couple of weeks here. He don't want us to go to sleep. He don't want me to go to sleep. When I'm preaching to you, I'm preaching to me. Let's stand up and let's be about the Father's business. If we've ever prayed in our past life, we need to be praying today, praying much, reading the Word of God, that we might be able to stand in the times that we live. It's going to get more difficulty in taking a stand for God. Did you hear what I say? I think it was last week that they arrested a minister in London, England for just saying the word homosexual in the pulpit, put him under arrest, took him downtown. Let me tell you, the devil is making inroads like a wild man. He is going to and fro, and he is ready to jump on anyone who are who's not on guard we must stay on guard let us strive to keep not just ourselves awake let's keep one another awake why don't you just take your elbow and just touch the person beside of you and say do you hear what the preacher said have you wo- have 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 you gone sleep on me? No, nobody shouting here this morning. I understand that I'm preaching a message. It's just not a it's not a shouting message unless you got the victory. If you got the victory, you can get up and shout anyway. But did you know this is good for us because that's what God called us to do. The, the, the Word of God, it's good for doctrine, it's good for encouragement, it's good to help us to get spiritually located, find out where we are in God. Have you ever uh, uh, done an a examination of yourself? Where am I in God? I have to look at me, not you, but I look at me. I have a full-time job just keeping me where I need to be in God. You see, we, we need to examine ourselves and see where we are spiritually. God help us to not just be a three-minute-a-day Christian. Why, it, it takes about that much time to pray for our meals during the day. And, and to say our prayers at night before we go to bed. God help us. God help us to keep not only ourselves awake, but to keep each other awake. Ever so often we need to just, just touch someone and say, you know, I love you and, and, and I just want you to know that I'm awake and I wanted to make sure you was also. And if you see me, just, just, just let him down a little bit. Hey, 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 just shake me a little bit. You know, sometimes uh, uh, I've, I've been sleeping and Donna's come in and shaken me and she said, you know, you had appointment here. You know that you need to be ready to go to a certain, certain place. Well, boy, I appreciated her touching me and letting me know that. And, 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 and same way, you, you've, had, you've had people to wake you up from a sleeping position. We need to help one another. We are brothers, sisters in the way. If your brother gets in the way the Bible we used to sing that in junior choir just stop and pick them up you remember that just stop and pick him up if your sister needs picking up just stop and pick her up but if the devil gets in the way we used to just start stomping when I was a junior in junior church said just run over top of him that's what we need to do we need to run over top of the devil and help our brothers and our sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ we're on our way to heaven this is just another day that we have to go through in our pilgrimage here in 
in order to get to the other side. I don't know about you, but I'm almost to home. I'm almost there, and I want to be faithful so that I can hear him say, well done, you good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over the few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Okay, let me give you one more point. It's high time to awake. It's high time. Why is it high time? Because souls are drifting from us. Have you seen any sinners come to church lately? Have you, have you brought one? Have you ever brought a sinner to church? Man, when I was first got saved, uh, they wanted to go out and bring somebody in. They'd bring them in. I think the revival I got saved in, I, I think it was somewhere... I don't know, maybe in the 30s that got saved. People would leave that revival meeting. They'd go get their spouse. They'd go get their kids, whatever it, it, it took, you know, to get them in, try to get them into the... Souls are drifting by us. They are going downstream. We may, we may be the last bridge over that swelling river for them. We need to be holding down the rope of salvation to them. I remember, I remember back yesteryear in, in, in a particular class that I was a heaven. And, and, and it was given an illustration how that a person fell in the, in the uh, river, up river, and they had tried to rescue, and it was such force they could not rescue the person. And finally, there was a one bridge. If they didn't save that person at this particular last location, they would not be able to rescue them. So all the town folk got together. This is a true story, and it happened. I even remember the place, Milton, Pennsylvania. And, and it said that in that swelling river, that all the town folk, they, they, made a, they made an appeal. Everybody that has a rope, meet me at the bridge. They knew that they missed him at the last place. And they couldn't save him. So all across that bridge, they got shoulder to shoulder and covered the whole bridge. And they dropped ropes down into the water. And here came this person. Oh, you, 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 could almost, you, you could almost see, they said, his heart turn over when he looked and he knew that there were so many ropes dangling down. If it was only one, he could, they could have missed him. But there were so many ropes dangling down, he just grabbed a hold of two or three of them and they pulled him to safety. That's the purpose of the church. God wants us to throw out the lifeline. He wants us to rescue the perishing. He wants us to get them saved. Oh, that's what the business of God is all about. The business of God is not us entertaining each other, but it's rescuing the pers the, the perishing and, and, and try to help the dying find Jesus Christ. Listen, hear my appeal today. God's called us for a tremendous task it seems to be so great and yet it's hard to get them to come to church somehow we if they won't come here we're going to have to get out to where they are god help us to be community minded help us to be so conscious night is coming when no man can work john 9 and 14 said Oh, night is coming when no man can work. And then that verse of Scripture uh, about Ephesians, uh, chap no, Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. Here the Bible is talking about old age. Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth. Before the difficult days come, hey, we've reached the difficult days, I would think. 
difficult days come and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. You know, we've reached today. There are some things that we used to have pleasure in some days, but now we're wondering what's going to go haywire today, you know. We wonder what's going to happen now. That's what, that's what the wise man was talking about over in the book of Ecclesiastes. Revelation 3, I think it's verse 15. He's speaking to the Laodicean church. Would you stand, please? Thank you for giving me some extra time today. You said, preacher, you took it. We didn't give it to you. Well, thank you for allowing me to take it. Because I, I wanted to get this message across today because it's so important. Souls are crying, men are dying. Listen to what he said to the Laodicean church. He said, I would, Jesus is talking, I would that you be hot or cold. But, can anybody say it? Because you are what? lukewarm I'll spew you out of my mouth now this is the church age where we find ourselves in what are we going to do about it God said he don't want us to be lukewarm just being mediocre I don't want to be a mediocre Christian I want to be one on fire for God don't you would you just ask God to help us as a church? Father, I love you. I thank you for touching us this morning. God, thank you for warning us again. Thank you for challenging us, oh God. Jesus, I love you. Blessed be the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Messiah. Hallelujah. We worship you today. Thank you, God, for touching me that I could touch this church and touch people out in you stream, God. We can't just live any old way. We can't be a lukewarm Christian. We need to be on fire. God, help us in these days and time. Forgive us, O oh God, for our lukewarmness. Forgive us, O oh God. Oh, Father, we repent before you. Now help us as a church to watch and pray. Pray and watch. Watch and pray. Pray and watch. This is what you said for us to do. And God, it seems as if we haven't been doing it like we should. I repent as the pastor, God. I repent for myself and for this church. Now help us to be about the Father's business. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen to the announcements. Our bulletin wasn't able. Um, we haven't had a real time of fellowship since Christmas. Uh, are you aware of that? So we had so much fun. How many of you remember our ice cream social that we had last year? It was a lot of fun. So this coming Saturday, we're going to have a, another ice cream social. We're calling it a neighborhood ice cream social. Now, my hubby just talked to you about the importance of reaching out. And this is what we'd like you to do. Betty's going to be standing here, and I'm going to be back there. Would you take, I have the wrong, oh, Robert, I, sorry, I thought I had the wrong mic. <laughs> uh, would you take one of these little invitations, and would you really pray about it and ask the Lord who you could invite to bring, to let them get to know? It is wonderful. Sometimes I think we just rub off on each other when, people see how we love the Lord and how we love each other so would you take that and we'd like to invite you to come it's going to be lots and lots of fun plus it can be an outreach for us my husband said if you put neighborhood ice cream out there what if you have a lot come I said I'll give up my ice cream how many would you give up your ice cream <laughs> if we have a lot come a lot of new faces down there I believe there'd be a lot of us give up our ice cream so we'd have enough so would you take this as a little outreach and would you see what we can do and uh, bring somebody that you know might be hurting or somebody that you'd like to lead to the Lord or somebody that might need a deeper richer experience in the Lord God bless you
Now, don't, show, don't all of you give me your invitation because I can't eat that much ice cream. It's 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. Okay, be sure and get right at the doors before I pray the demonstration. We're not going to let a one escape. Yes, we will do that right now. Her grandson has 